Hey there, today I want to talk about this ink. It's an ink by Waterman. Uh, it is on my bottle, it says Florida Blue Ink. I always call it Tifcaf, the ink formerly known as Florida, uh, because I think it now goes by the name Serenité. Um, <clears throat> sorry, the reason I wanted to do a review of this ink is that I think it's an excellent ink. It's a blue, it's pretty nice, fairly dark, um, but the, the big plus to this ink is that it's very, very well behaved. So, whenever I have a difficult pen, you know, a new pen or a vintage pen that I don't want to put aggressive inks in, that I, I you know, want to be able to clean quickly, this is my choice. And it's easy to clean, it behaves well, it I don't think I've ever seen it feather except on maybe toilet paper. Um, it flows well, it doesn't bleed through, it's excellent. So when you use this ink you know that whatever bad things you see, feathering, bleed through, etc. is either the paper or the pen or you know something else. Bad flow must be the pen, it's not this ink. So it's a, it's a, um, a Waterman bottle. For those of you not familiar with it, the uh, the nice thing of a Waterman bottle is that you can put it like this. So once it actually uh, the, the ink level uh, drops, you can see that here. Um, you know, it's it's not a full bottle anymore. But once it, it starts to drop, you can put it like this. Then the ink is goes down into that corner. You can stick your pen in, and you can just fill it up. So that's actually something I like a lot. Um, Apart from that, you know, it's just a blue. Blue inks are not for everyone. Some people think they're a little dull. I see the point. On the other hand, imagine the wife of your colleague dies and you have to sign a card. Are you going to use Apache Sunset? I mean, sometimes it's just good to have a neutral ink at hand, and that's, you know, this is an excellent ink for that. So that's enough talk. Uh, you know the pens I use. I'm going to grab some Rhodia paper, and um, we're going to do some writing samples. I hope this is going to be useful, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with Waterman Tifcaf. The ink formerly known as Florida Blue. Now, I think. Serene. Serenity. Okay. Start with a bit of fine writing. Go on to medium. As you can see right now, it's just a fairly pale blue, but things are to warm up a little. Broad. Someone recently asked me via YouTube, is broad the same as bold? Yes, it is. So I'm sorry if this was confusing or anything. Uh, broad and bold are the same thing. Sometimes. I don't remember the soap opera being called The Broad and the Beautiful, but that still. So that was broad, and then italic, just the light a little bit.
If the color is not entirely accurate, please take a look at the um, uh, the, the high resolution stills. I, I hope they will. You know, the white balance seems to be a little off every now and then. I have to use artificial lighting. I'm not in such a position that I can do this, you know, in broad daylight all the time. So bear with me. So here we'll get some passes to give you an idea of the saturation. Uh, one pass. It's a fairly dark blue. It's not a light blue. It's very legible. So not like, for example, Gerbin Bleu Azur, which is very light blue, or, or Diabolo Monte. This is really a, a legible dark blue. All right. Um, bit of flex writing. What have we got? We've got Florida. Now that's a word with some interesting loops. Florida. I think I've now dotted the R instead of the I, but you probably catch my drift. Again, dark blue, a bit of railroading there, using up a lot of ink. Of course, when I tell you this is the best behaved ink I've ever used, it starts to railroad. There we go. So, a dark blue. Dries pretty well. I think this is already that's dry. Very good. As I said, pleasant ink to use. I mean, you can see that it, it dries easily. We've had inks that took a lot longer to dry. I'll do a second pass. I'll come back for a third pass later. So let's try to squeeze a bit more line variation out of the other nibs. Here we have a medium. This is a pretty hard nib, so... You can really see it's a dark blue here. I like this color. It's, it's very legible. When I think of standard fountain pen ink, like you get from those international short cartridges you, you, you or at least I used to get at school, now they had this sort of pale blue, which I think was pale because it's, it was water-soluble, um, and this is darker. It's definitely a dark blue, and I like this better. Finally, I'll do some italic writing. Oh, I'm sorry, was that off-screen? I'm terribly sorry, I didn't adjust the paper. Um, italic, so this was broad. Italic writing. Um, this may just be dried up again. Yep, dry. Let's do a third pass. I'll leave that to dry, then I'll come back to that. There we go. And now that I have this broad nib in hand, I may as well use it. Um, Florida. I've done that the other way around, well, who cares. Um, F for Florida Blue. As well as a little bit of writing with a medium nib. And then out comes the water, but first let's have a look at this. So here you can have, here you get a bit of an idea of the, the shading in a very saturated pen or a less saturated pen. Goes to really dark blue, I'd almost say indigo. It's, it's, it's a very, very dark color. Um, whereas this is, is lighter, but still quite dark. Um, again, I, I love that, that color. Okay, so this is probably dry. Yeah, more or less. Um, just put some water to that first. See how that reacts. Uh, 
and then of course here we've got this is still quite wet let's cheat a little and make it dry up a bit faster a little bit of blotting paper just so we won't have to wait for hours um, this bit is still a little wet so okay some more water so that's what we get um, it isn't, doesn't say that it can be solved by water uh, on the bottle I think, no it doesn't but as you can see the water makes short work of this ink so if I were to blot that yet again I think we'll see that the writing is pretty much gone so if you're looking for a waterproof ink this isn't it okay I'm going to use slide the camera away a bit there we go we need a scorecard usually I have more room at the bottom of the page but I uh, messed up the name a little bit of this ink so I'll try to write cleaning superb getting this out of your pen is just you know a few flushes and you're done so that's fantastic uh, bleed through we'll have to see about that but I think it's going to be fine uh, we need the color well that's a, a dark blue right 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 and uh, then we have shading I'll put down not really um, I guess you could say that there is some shading as this goes from lighter to darker but this is not extremely pronounced so I, I would say it's it, it's not really a shading ink um, then again which blue is uh, I, I, I can't come up with one from the top of my head just like that flow excellent uh, put this in any pen and it'll write it's it's that simple I've, I've never had this ink skip or, or anything like that feathering well I'll, I'll come back to that too um, but on this paper there is none uh, it's generally not a, a feathering ink so that's that's pretty good I think um, I'll move the camera a little bit again uh, then we have uh, drying time well as you can see that was pretty fast even with these very wide strokes so I would say that's excellent and finally we have waterproofness what water has an E in it hasn't it waterproofness um, poor as you can see the writing is gone so I mean it's it's this is not an ink you want to put in something that'll get wet. Okay, I'll try to tear this off. Why is that so difficult? There we go. I mean, I hold a master's degree. I should be able to tear a piece of paper from a notepad. Paper, other paper. Here we have copier paper. And we're going to use that for some more fooling around with the ink the quick brown fox jumps over me old love fine medium the quick brown fox jumps over copier paper broad The quick brown fox jumps over a bagpipe. 
How does that even work? It's got to be the most poorly drawn fox ever. Not to mention the bagpipes. Well, anyway. Broad. Italic. The quick brown fox never comes over. Not even for a cup of coffee. And now, you ask for my help? Huh? And then, we should do a bit of fat writing. First do some flex. some fat writing sorry my nib angling was a little off there angling is not even a word is it in this context well never really mind I'm talking gibberish sorry it doesn't mind it doesn't matter God Far, far. Wait a minute. That should have been. That should have been fat. But if I add a T now, it says fart. No, wait. That ah, oh, screwed up. Sorry. Um. You see, you just. I mean. You get distracted for a second, and you get all this bloody rubbish. Well, well, well. If it isn't the cheap copy of paper that actually makes the ink waterproof. More absorbent paper. Sucks the ink in. And there you go. Still not ideal, but okay. Right. I just spilled a jar of water on my desk. Just put a cloth on that. Sorry. Sorry. Bloody chaos here. Okay. Bleed through. What about feathering? Bleed through, what about feathering? Chaos. Feathering first. In all honesty, I don't see any feathering. Even with this very wide nib, you see a little bit right there. Right there, there's some feathering. But that is flex writing on copy of paper. Everyday writing, even with a broad nib, in all honesty, even with this extremely poorly drawn fox and the bagpipes, I don't see any feathering that's noteworthy. In fact, I don't see any feathering at all. Just there. So that's pretty impressive. What about bleed through? I see bleed through. That's mainly the part with the flex, the really wide nib, in other words, the fat nib, and there is this, this drawing which has a lot of ink, but for the, for the regular writing, maybe a little bit right there, uh, that's probably with the broad, yeah, that's, oh, that was the, the underscore there. Um, so even with the broad nib, I think generally speaking it's pretty good. Maybe a little bit here and there, but hardly noticeable. I would find that, you know, very acceptable. When it comes to the Rhodia paper, uh, sorry for the bright orange flash all of a sudden, and when it comes to the Rhodia paper, um, feathering I already told you is very good, uh, bleed through, well there's a little bit right there, well that's a, a flex writing, and that's where the way it railroaded, so I put a lot of pressure on that. Um, but apart from that I think it's cool. Uh, have a look at the, the wet bits, you see that? The, the writing is, is gone, especially this whole calligraphy is gone, so um, no waterproofness. So let's finish the scorecard. Bleed through, I'll put down good, you may add very good, uh, you know, as you see fit. Feathering is, is very good. Hardly any feathering at all. So, there you have it. Waterman Tifcaf, the ink formerly known as Florida, a.k.a. Serenité. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.